Time now for the round table on this President's Day weekend. And as you can see, joining us at the table this morning are Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh, Republican political analyst Virginia Buckingham. So let's start with Diana Zoglu. Marianne, what, what struck you most about the conversation? Well, you know, you don't have to be a consultant to know that she didn't say no to your question about running for governor now, did she? She did not say she no. She did not. She did not. So I, I think we've got that established. So she had a lovely little answer all rolled out and all of that. Um, Wait, you think she is going to run? Did she say no to you, Sherman? She did not. She, she did, did not. not. Did she say no to you? She did not. No, I did so not hear again, those you don't have to be a consultant letters. to figure out that <laughs> okay. she didn't say no. Okay? <laughs> okay? So I think that's on the table. And I think that might be behind the little the little love language discussion we had today about how much money she got in the budget. So no question about it, Diana Dodoglio is a woman in a hurry. She went from state rep to state senator to auditor in 12 years. She's going to ride this ballot question all over the state. And let's see what happens in two years. Jenny? So two things. There yep. are no love languages in politics, <laughs> as Marianne very well knows as well. And secondly, what would she run on if she ran for governor? She continues to come across to me anyway as unserious about the job she has in front of her. She's very much political. I give her credit for that. But what is she actually doing across state government where there's a lot she could dig up and save taxpayers money? She's not talking about that. She continues just to demagogue. All right. Well, last week, Milton voters rejected a state mandated housing plan, a plan meant to comply with a 2021 law encouraging new development near MBTA rail lines. Opponents said development would have put a massive burden on the part of their community. They cited traffic and other concerns on OTR earlier this month. Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll said a no vote could be expensive for the town. There are discretionary grants that are at stake here. They will lose money. We do not want that to happen. We want to arm communities. Part of this, uh, the work that we're doing to support the housing crisis is making sure everybody's doing their fair share to try and build the housing we need in the Commonwealth to help make sure we have the housing that supports your community. And this is key for us. All right, so how tough will the response be from the Healy administration and how tough should it be? Ginny? Well, first of all, this was a loss for the Healy administration because she put her thumb on the scale with her political operation to try to sway that vote and the voter said no dice. The penalty should be harsh because they said it was going to be and they're going to lose, I think, credibility if they don't follow through and show that there's a, a response um, and a consequence to not voting in compliance with the law. How tough should this response be from the Healy administration, Marian? I think it's going to be pretty tough. I mean, it, I think what all, this was all about, first of all, affordable housing is one of the biggest problems right. we face in Massachusetts. Right. Maura Healy ran on bringing more affordable housing to Massachusetts. Did she lose the battle in Milton? Yes. But she wins the war in the end with voters because because they want to see her fighting for it. If she's not going to fight for it, why should everybody else do it? So this was a message to every other suburban community around the state, like Milton, that says affordable housing is coming to your community. Why don't you go ahead and do it now before I have to make I, you I do will, it? I will just offer this because I live in one of these communities along the way, and they use this word affordable mm -hmm. housing. But no, it was not affordable in the community that I live in by most people who live right. in the Commonwealth. So it's a relative, it's a moving target. There isn't one number that you lock on for affordable. It's a I, moving target. I think most communities that are facing this fight took from that lesson that they can win. Yeah. They can yes. win against the governor. And unless she follows through so and takes, will, yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They, they might try, but in the end, she's got the power to change it. All right, let's talk about the Boston City Council. It's looking into so-called congestion pricing. It's a policy that has been put in practice. It would tax drivers for access to the city. New York City is going to do it. Is this the road that Boston wants to go down? I, I, I mean the pun intentionally, Ginny. Ginny. I'm looking at Ginny. Ginny. <laughs> well, then I'll go first. There you go. Um, so we just had five hotels in this city get five stars because we are a world-class city unless policies like congestion pricing and rent control and the downtown doesn't get revitalized and the north end doesn't get to have outdoor dining. If we continue to say no to people coming into the city, then we're not going to get a, a five-star city behind mm -hmm. those five-star hotels. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. disaster. What do you think, Barry? Well, look, I think long before any th congestion pricing or anything else, first let's fix the T. Let's have more buses and more bikes like New York City, where they're going to do congestion pricing because they have better public transportation. Until and unless we have better public transportation and options for people and regulate like electric bikes and everything else, then we can start talking about it. Well, that's we're talking maybe first let's fix the T. That's a that's a <laughs> At big least, hill to climb. At least people are trying. <laughs> How novel. <laughs> the South Carolina Republican primary finally arrives this Saturday between courthouse appearances, former President Donald 
Donald Trump continues his campaign to return to the White House. Now, all signs point to an easy win over Nikki Haley in her home state. Is her only path, does she have a path, Marianne? Well, Donald Trump has now taken the Putin playbook and done exactly what he would do in a dictatorial society. Donald Trump appointed his daughter-in-law to the RNC to run it, to make sure that no matter what, he is the nominee, because the RNC ultimately decides who is the nominee for the Republican Party, number one. Number two, in about three weeks, he's going to have all the delegates he needs to have the nomination. It is over, and everyone who's a member pretty much of the RNC now is a Trump supporter. That's how that works. Jenny, where does where does Nikki Haley go from here? Well, this race has long been over. The fat lady will sing finally mm -hmm. um, this weekend, and all will be done. However, what I'm interested in is does Nikki Haley endorse him after he called her bird brain, after he took on her husband for being in the military? Yeah, where was he? Yeah, yeah. Where I mean, is he? Where it, was I mean, that? that to me would be yeah. appalling, and it would say everything the voters would need to know about Nikki Haley if she right. does that. Oh.